Members back on the file, file item 38, pass and retain. We are moving to file item 39, that's AB 2444 for the purpose of amendments. The clerk will read with amendments. Assembly Bill 2444 with amendments by Assembly Member Eduardo Garcia. Mr. Garcia, on the amendments. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, the amendments uh, before you are clarifying in nature. They address a number of different questions and concerns that have arised uh, during the process of uh, AB 2444. Uh, I respectfully ask uh, for your aye vote on these amendments. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on these amendments. All those in favor say aye. I oppose say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. The bill is out to print and back on file. Mr. Calderon, for your procedural motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request the unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 63 and Assembly Rule 69 to allow Assembly Member Eduardo Garcia to take up AB 2444 in mock up form without reference to file for purpose of third reading. Ms. Waldron, for what purpose do you rise? We object and ask for a roll call vote. Ms. Waldron is withholding unanimous consent. Members, this is a procedural vote. The clerk will open the roll. Mr. Calderon is asking for an aye vote. Mr. Calderon is moving, and Mr. Cooper is seconding on the rules suspension. Members, this is a procedural vote. Mr. Calderon is asking for an aye vote. Mr. Waldron, Ms. Waldron is asking for a no vote on the rules suspension. This requires 41 votes. The clerk will... Close the roll, ayes 50, noes 27, the rules are suspended. We are going to take up the bill in chief, AB 2444, without reference to file. Clerk will read. Assembly Bill 2444 by Assembly Member Eduardo Garcia, an act relating to a parks, water, climate, and coastal protection and outdoor access for all program by providing the funds necessary, therefore, through an, elect an election of the issuance of the sale of bonds of the State of California for the handling and disposition of those funds and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Mr. Garcia, you may open on the bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker and members, thank you for taking up AB 2444. Let me begin by saying it's been close to 14 years since this body has last approved a substantial funding measure designed to improve and expand park and outdoor infrastructure in the state of California. There are a few things that I think is, are important that I highlight as it relates to the current status of our parks in California. We know that state parks have a deferred maintenance backlog of over $1 billion. We know that the need for deferred maintenance, expansion, and improvements to restore local and regional park infrastructure is close to $30 billion. We also know that the demand for new and improve recreational space in our disadvantaged areas of the state are immense, as it was demonstrated a few years ago when the demand for funds outpaced the availability by nearly 10 to 1. While many are daunted by the costs incurred by the state when we take on bonds, I would argue that the outdoor economy in this state is an enormous economic driver. In fact, the outdoor economy is one of the top economic sectors supporting over 500,000 jobs and representing an $87 billion industry. Members' parks serve as one of the cornerstones of our state and the communities that we represent. They provide a place for recreation across all demographics within communities facing harder economic challenges, while in some in California have the ability to go on nice vacations around the world. Many of our families here in the state of California would argue that the majority of Californians spend much of their leisure time in our state and local community parks. Whether it's a single mom taking her one-year-old for a walk around the park or family celebrating a birthday, our parks provide the perfect space for individuals to enjoy their time with little to no cost. This is increasingly important in this world where we continue to have fewer and fewer less expensive options for recreation in an outdoor setting. Additionally, parks and other green spaces provide a wide range of secondary benefits such as significant increases to public safety, air quality, and improvements to mental and physical health. When people have parks within walking distance to their homes, these improvements in their lives are easier to attain, and ultimately, it relieves cost pressures on the taxpayer related to other health and mental health expenses. When delving into the issue of parks in California, you quickly realize 
how we are still coming up short when it comes to the expansion and improvement within parks and poorest communities of the state. That is why part of this bond is aimed at tackling the absence of parks within disadvantaged communities. For example, 40% of the funds contained in this measure will be focused on distressed communities in California. Specifically, 20% will be set aside for economically disadvantaged communities. This investment not only is an opportunity for urban centers, but also for rural communities in the Sierra and Central Valleys. Since most smaller and crucial cities do not have a lot of resources, this bond also me mentions that 10% of the granted funds can be used for technical assistance and that these communities are exempt from the need to leverage local dollars. Members, this bond has been put together through a collaboration of dozens of stakeholder groups across the state, and they've indicated to me that this bond will serve as a model for the rest of the nation. They are excited to see this bond moving forward and are thrilled that we also have endeavored to forge a bipartisan product in hopes that a wide range of Californian concerns and priorities could be addressed and responded to since this is a statewide effort. There are investments in this bond providing opportunities for youth through investments in state and local cores. Money is available to improve accessibility to parks and outdoor spaces for Californians who are disabled. There is a substantial investment to protect wildlife habitat and our waterways. This measure also responds to concerns raised about duplication of funding by avoiding investments that were already heavily covered in previous bonds, while at the same time helping to tackle the big issue of deferred maintenance at our state parks. Natural community conservation planning priorities have been included, which helps both development and conservation work together. And finally, members, the per capita funding portion will proportionally benefit all districts. This ensures that everyone across the state has an opportunity to compete for these dollars. 30 seconds, Mr. Gershman. Members, this has been a, an amazing process to work with people on both sides of the aisle and the numerous stakeholders from throughout the state of California who are strong advocates for a healthier California, a stronger economic California, and ultimately that our state parks continue to be the cornerstone of our state and our communities that we represent. I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Mr. Arambula, you are recognized. I stand today because I was moved last time we were in session by, the, by His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, who was here. He spoke about this being our only planet, that we cannot breathe while on the moon. And I stand here today representing the worst air quality that we have in our nation. And our kids in my community do not have the ability to breathe. We too often have paved over communities. We don't have parks. And in my community, I am here today to represent and to fight for parks. There was a recent ranking by the Trust and Public Fund's annual rankings of 100 largest cities. Fresno ranks the fifth largest city in California, and yet we are ranked 97th out of 100 in terms of parks per capita. We do not have the same opportunities, the same equity that others do when it comes to parks. What I would like to do is to stand today as a physician to talk about the benefits of health, why it matters for our community to start dealing with issues like obesity, issues like diabetes that can be addressed by public spending on parks. I would like to stand and to fight for my community because while we are ranked 97th, we are literally ahead of only one other large city. The other two large cities didn't even submit applications to say why they were ranked lower than we were. We are behind and we need champions here in our state capitol fighting for issues that matter. Parks matter. There are reasons why we're here. It's important for us to stand up. Now, I would like to say as a physician for the final time, we have an obligation to our city, to our state, to our country, and to this world. His Holiness reminded us of that obligation, and each and every one of us must look inside of ourselves, because I urge a support for an I vote here today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Rambula. Ms. Baker, you are recognized. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of AB 240. Four, four, and thank our colleague from Indio for his hard work for, from Coachella. 
from Coachella for his very hard work on this measure and just offer specific demonstrations of why it's important that our state stand with our local communities and the work that they're doing to have vibrant parks and open space in our area. Uh, in the East Bay community, there is a uh, state facility called Del Val Lake that a local regional park has to operate because the state does not have funding to operate what is one of the most frequently visited lakes in the entire Northern California area. And this bill does not carve out for them as a Christmas tree a very specific provision for them. It provides state matching funds for competitive grants and applications that our communities will have to work for, show they have skin in the game, and earn to have support to operate these and to do the infrastructure investments that are necessary. That's the right way to do support for these kind of parks projects. A second example is Mount Diablo State Park, which is in both my district and our good colleague from Concord. It's a wonderful state park. It's the most frequently visited state park in uh, the Bay Area region. And there is an organization called Save Mount Diablo that was honored just yesterday uh, from Cal Nonprofits that has I, purchased through private money land that they want to gift to state parks to make it a better park for all of Californians. And they are unable to because state parks does not have the resources to maintain and staff that beautiful land. This, this measure is going to help them come forward with those funds and the ability to, to keep our parks preserved for future generations. And I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. Ms. Brown, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm in support of AB 2444. I'm in support because in my district, parts are very, very limited. In my district's in my district, the city of Colton doesn't even have a soccer field, something that I've been working on for a couple of years now. In my district, we have many poor people. One of the things that we have to look at is that poor people want a better quality of life as well. And the only way that we can get a better quality of life is if we get help, and this bond will help us to do the work that needs to be done so that we can have less diabetes, so that we can have less obesity, so that we can have those things that everyone else in the public has because they have better parks, they have a better situation. Thank you very much. Please support this bill. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Mr. Alejo, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and members. This is a 54-vote bill, and I can't think of a, more, uh, a more, more important bill that we could find bipartisan support on. There's nothing more American than parks. We all know that when we grew up, the most the cheapest, but yet some of the most important moments that we cherish with our families, with our parents, was the opportunity to go and enjoy our investment in parks across the state of California and beyond. But as many of my colleagues have expressed, those of us who represent rural and disadvantaged areas, when we talk about building healthier communities, when we talk about uplifting working families, an essential part of that is having, having open spaces and parks for our families to enjoy. In some of our communities that are, that are fighting some horrendous homicide rates, where young people are being shot week after week, where mothers are afraid to let their kids out, to play just outside their doors. That's the reality that we face. And as, as a, coming from local government, you always recognize that if you really want to address crime and the poverty and a better standard of living for our families, it, it was essential that in those toughest neighborhoods that you had places like community gardens and parks and open spaces for our grandparents and our parents and our children to be able to enjoy. And we have to look what happened with the last park bond, Prop 84, it was well utilized because it matched private dollars with local dollars and state dollars that make, made parks get off the ground financially in places like Pajaro that never had a park whatsoever. But it was a, a, pop, a community of mostly farm workers that had not a single park. But Property 4 allowed that, that uh, park to, be, uh, to become a reality. And if you go every weekend, you'll, you, you'll see the hundreds of people that utilize that park week after week. It's a success story of what we could do right 
uh, partnering with local communities and private, uh, pri private donors to make these parks a reality. With that, I respectfully ask for an I vote on this important bill, and I commend the author from Coachella. Thank you, Mr. Alejo. Dr. Wood, you're recognized. Thank, thank you. I rise in support of Assembly Bill 2444. Um, you know, parks are a huge part of our economy. Uh, people visit and come to districts where there are a lot of state parks. My district has some of the most beautiful parks, and everybody's district has some of the most beautiful parks. But it, you cannot ignore the huge economic driver that state parks are. You can't ignore what it does for people's health and their well-being to get out stores, to get, get, get commune with nature, to see and experience fresh air and, and fellowship with their, with their fellow man. So, so I, couldn't support, I couldn't be more supportive of my colleague from Coachella. We are from complete polar opposite ends of the state. It's a huge issue, and I, I, I strongly urge everyone to support this important measure. Thank you, Dr. Wood. Mr. Cooley, you are recognized. <clears throat> Colleagues, uh, I rise in support of this bond measure in, in my district, but in my city of Rancho Cordova. Rancho Cordova is a very old community. We, the Pony Express actually originally rode through uh, Rancho Cordova, the first railroad in California. As we formed our city, we had very old neighborhoods, and then we had new growth neighborhoods. In the nature of new growth, the developers developed beautiful new parks. But it's the older neighborhoods that struggle to find the funding to develop parks to bring them on board. Uh, in Rancho Cordova, we supported our local park district, the Cordova Recreation Park District, to get funding for the White Rock Park, which was a park that was there and preceded Highway 50 and was actually cut in half by Highway 50. A very old park, which is tremendously upgraded because of park bond money. Uh, we have a fabulous Mather Sports Center, which has become a site for competitive sports and uh, all kinds of tournaments. This was a very tired, worn facility of Mather Air Force Base and left in a bedraggled condition when the base closed in 1996, but because of park bond money, today an outstanding uh, regional park. And then we have Swanston Park, uh, part of the Mission Oaks Park District, which is in a highly urbanized area and uh, has been dramatically upgraded so that it becomes a site of recreational activity, community life, community services, a wide array of things so that folks who grew up there see the transformation of that park. So this bond is very important for the new parks it will create, but it is also important for helping those areas of the state which are established and don't necessarily have new development dollars to fund improvements that make a difference in local quality of life, and frankly, property values. It's all about helping to reinvent and re sustain quality of life in long-established parts of California, and I urge your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Cooley. Mr. Thurman, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I rise in support of AB 2444. I want to thank our colleague from Coachella for his leadership here, and I'd like to associate myself with the distinguished comments of my colleagues about all the benefits to health and wellness uh, that our parks offer to all of our districts. I would simply add this, and that is we always talk about our need to help our cities and local government. And local government is asked to maintain parks, but they have almost no resources to do it. This is a vehicle to provide those resources to local government. Some in this body might say that their philosophy is against spending state money on these kinds of things. If you think that way, I'd ask you to consider one thing. We're not asking you today to vote to spend any state money. We're asking you to vote to give your citizens the chance to vote whether or not they want their state dollars to be paid and used to maintain and restore parks in the state of California and in their district and in your district. We always say this is a district bill. Think about your district. Give your district the right to choose whether or not we spend those dollars. I urge your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Mr. Jones, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. And uh, first of all, I want to rise in agreement with just practically about every statement uh, in support of our state parks today. Uh, all of these uh, arguments in support of the bond that are really stated in support of our park system are accurate. They, the parks do all of these things. The problem I have today, uh, members, is I just cannot support the bond and uh, let me go through a couple of reasons why. First off, this bond, $2 billion, represents about 1.5% of our annual budget. 
one and a half percent. If we just broke that up and split the bond into $500,000 increments, we would be well under a half a percent of our annual budget. We could start spending this money tomorrow. We don't have to wait to pass a bond. We don't have to wait for the voters to approve this. The money is there. We can spend it. Let's put it in the budget. Let's work in a bipartisan, bicameral way with the governor's office and the department and find a way to spend the $2 billion. Now some facts about the bond specifically. Over a billion dollars would go towards park creation, maintenance, and restoration, with another billion towards water and land conservation programs. Ladies and gentlemen, all of your arguments in favor of this bond, only half of it is going to go towards that. The other half is going to go towards water and land conservation programs, which we already have bonds for and are already spending money on. We don't need to go into additional debt to, for those programs. Mr. Speaker, permission to read. Without objection. I'll close with this. California has a distinct problem. Of the $135 billion that voters have authorized, almost $30 billion has not yet been issued. The state has not issued almost $4.5 billion in transportation bonds, $9 billion in high-speed rail bonds, plus $7.5 billion from the recent water bond. The principal reason for this amount is that many bond-funded projects have not received required approvals. The Treasurer generally sells about $1 billion in new money bonds twice per year. So even if the legislature enacts and the voters approve AB 244, many of its purposes may have to wait several, several years for funding as projects funded by previously authorized bonds get up and running. Ladies and gentlemen, we're all proud of our state parks. The author and I share Anza Borrego State Park, which is the largest state park in the country, right here in Southern California, and it's one of the best state parks in the country, and we all can say that about our local state parks. If you are serious about your arguments this morning, in favor of our state parks, you will say no to the bond and you will say yes to the budget process and let's start spending the money. I ask for a no vote. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Thank you, members. Mr. Speaker, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh, one of the things that we all seem committed to is promoting and enhancing access to state parks. This especially includes getting more parks in urban communities and it means finding ways for more people to explore the wonders of our state's parks. We've made a lot of progress, but challenges remain, especially in disadvantaged communities. Funding is chief among them. That's why I'm proud to support AB 2444. AB 2444 requires 20% 20 of funds to be allocated to serve disadvantaged communities. Typically, set-asides for DACs are about 10%, so this is double that. Just as important, disadvantaged communities can use up to 10% of the grants for technical assistance, and they do not have to provide matching funds. These provisions help ensure all Californians can benefit from this bond. Members, we do a lot of work in this chamber to provide for our children's future, their health, their education, their housing, their opportunity. Children also need to be able to spend time outdoors in nature. By passing this bond, we can help that need. Finally, I want to applaud the work done by the gentleman from Indio as he crafted a bipartisan solution which ensures that every corner of the state benefits from this bond. I ask for an aye vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All debate having ceased on this item. Mr. Garcia, you may close if you wish. Mr. Speaker, I know that uh, the comments have uh, all covered a lot of the importance that the bond brings to Californians, and I've also heard the concerns that some of you continue to have, whether it be about the cost, whether about the process, or for that matter, how we move forward. And uh, members, you have my commitment to continue to work on improving uh, this bond uh, so that ultimately we have 
an opportunity to provide the much necessary resources to invest in our state parks, our neighborhood parks, and ultimately in the families uh, of California. So I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. With that, clerk will open the roll. All members vote who wish to vote. All members vote who wish to vote. All members vote who wish to vote. This is a two-thirds bill, members. All members vote. All members vote or desire to 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 vote. Clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. Ayes 55, nose 14 on the urgency. Ayes 55, nose 14 on the measure. Bill passes. Members, pursuant to Assembly Rule 77.2, I am re-referring file item number 27, that's AB 1176, Cooper, to the Public Safety Committee. Members, moving briefly back to guest introductions. And members, we ask for your attention for a special presentation. Members, please take conversations off the floor. Mr. Gordon, you are recognized at Mr. Arambula's desk for your introduction and presentation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh Today, we have two longtime employees of the State Assembly retiring, and I wanted to take a moment as Chair of the Rules Committee to honor them on our behalf. Let me start with John Felice. John has um, spent 14 years working for the Assembly. Uh, he began his career as a designer after earning his bachelor's degree in interior architecture from the University of Oregon. In 1990, he began working for the Department of General Services in their real estate and design division. John's employment with DGS was supposed to be a 30-day limited term assignment, but it morphed into a decade-long career that included working on the interior design of the governor's office and residence during the Great Davis administration. In 2001, John joined the assembly, and 2012 was promoted to the facilities manager for the assembly rules committee. As facilities manager, John was responsible for capital and legislative office building construction projects all of your office moves, as well as district office lease and occupancy matters. Uh, he undertook projects to preserve the history and beauty of the State Capitol building. And over the years, John has brought great enjoyment to his colleagues through his wonderful sense of humor, his delectable cooking marvels, and his Broadway quality Halloween costumes. Uh, in his retirement, uh, John looks forward to spending more time with his longtime partner and spouse, Mike Todd, who is joining him here today. Please join me in thanking John Felice for his 14 years of service to the Assembly. <laughs> Madam Speaker Emeritus, you are also recognized on this presentation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And while people are busy shaking uh, John Felice's hand uh, as we're talking about him, I wanted to just make a comment or two. You know, members, something I think we sometimes forget is that one of the great privileges that we have as legislators is that we walk and we walk inside and work inside this magnificent building. And for 14 years, John has dedicated himself uh, to the care of this great treasurer. And care is the appropriate word because he cares very deeply about the Capitol and everyone who works here. 
I loved working with John when I was the speaker, though probably not as much as former Speaker Perez did. John was thrilled when he heard that I took his number off of speed dial. But I will say this, on behalf of my uh, female colleagues from San Diego, uh, because we reside in the state building in San Diego, many people do not want to reside in the state building in San Diego. Uh, but John Felice showed up uh, and he made that a livable habitat for us in San Diego. We are on the sixth floor. Uh, and it's beautiful. We enjoy it. We like it. But everyone else in the building hates us because our floor is fabulous. And you only have to get off the elevator that sometimes works uh, to see how fabulous our floor is. And lastly, I would just say, as a going away gesture, uh, John, in an honor of your long fought battles on the fourth floor, to make sure you don't miss us too much, every four days we're going to have lobbyists and witnesses come to your house and rearrange your furniture. Mr. Gordon, you are again recognized. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to uh, introduce you to Bruce Reynolds. Bruce is retiring after 28 years of service to the Assembly Rules Committee. Bruce uh, began his career as a U.S. Navy, when in the U.S. Navy as a sonar technician, where he learned technical skills and traveled the world on board the SS, USS Biddle. After being honorably discharged, Bruce attended the University of Cincinnati in Ohio, earning his bachelor's degree in economics. And after college, he obtained professional experience as a hardware maintenance and support engineer. In 1988, Bruce joined the California State Assembly Office of Information Services. By January of 1996, Bruce was promoted to manager of hardware engineering with the Assembly Computer Services. Later that year, Bruce transferred to the Legislative Data Center, where he continued his outstanding career in support of the Assembly Computing Infrastructure and was instrumental in the implementation and technical support of computer hardware and software. In April 1999, Bruce returned to the Assembly as an information technology consultant for the Assembly Rules Committee, where he provided technical support to Assembly offices and functioned as our liaison with LDC. In his retirement, uh, Bruce looks forward to playing golf, and Bruce, it really pains me to have to say this, and watching his beloved Cincinnati Bengals uh, please join me in recognizing and commending Bruce for his 28 years of service and dedication to this institution. Members, please give your attention to Ms. Garcia for your special guest introduction today in the Assembly. Ms. Garcia. Good morning, members. Up in the gallery, I have the young legislators from the 58th District, high school seniors who are up here today. Uh, they will be conducting mock committee sessions and mock floor sessions on bills that they have crafted and have been working on all year long. Please help me welcome the young legislators from the 58th District. Members, we are back on the file.
On third reading, file items 41 through 43, pass and retain. Members, we are moving to file item number 44. That's ACR 188 by Ms. Melendez. The clerk will read. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 188 by Samira Melendez and others relative to PTSD Awareness Month. Ms. Melendez. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oops. Uh, members, members, please give your attention to Ms. Melendez. Ms. Melendez, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Throughout our state's history, men and women in the armed forces have served to preserve our freedom, protect our security, and uphold our democratic values. These men and women very often have put themselves in harm's way to ensure continued freedom for America. Many of them face negative effects from their service after they've come back home. Some of these effects are physical, losing the ability to see, hear, or walk. But there are other types of injuries, invisible to the eye, that require just as much attention. And these are the invisible wounds of war. Thousands of veterans in California suffer from post-traumatic stress, a health condition that is most commonly caused by a traumatic event. PTS can cause flashbacks, nightmares, and severe anxiety. This type of health condition considerably increases the risk of depression, of alcohol and drug abuse, and, and suicide, especially if left untreated. Cases of post-traumatic stress remain undiagnosed and unreported due to a lack of awareness and education in our state. And I think our veterans deserve every possible resource to not only ensure their physical health, but their mental and emotional health as well. This resolution proclaims the month of June 2016 as Post-Traumatic Stress Awareness Month with the goal of increasing public awareness of this invisible injury and rid the stigma surrounding PTS. It is our duty to the men and women who serve our country to help them overcome this obstacle and move on with their lives. I would ask that you support this resolution and members, if I could just make a personal statement to you. If there is an opportunity for you to get involved with a veterans organization that helps um, those suffering from PTS, I, I would encourage you to do so. And there is a variety of ways you can do that. But I, I guarantee you, you probably know at least one person um, in your immediate you know, life that, that is suffering from this. And you may not realize what it is, but it affects an awful lot of people. We have a lot of reservists who were plucked from their everyday normal lives and sent over to the Middle East. Um, and that can be a, a life-changing experience for them. Um, they are still struggling with this, so I would ask that you support that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Ms. Melendez. Ms. Gonzalez, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise is a proud co-author of this resolution. We often think about um, the wounds of war being physical, and although it's very easy for somebody to ask for help when there's physical wounds, for some reason we haven't uh, been clear that the wounds that are made uh, internally are just, if not even more important to heal. And so this resolution is important to bring more awareness to post-traumatic stress, to the fact that veterans can and should call when they feel like there is this stress in their life, and hopefully to one day reduce what is an astounding figure. 22 veterans a day commit suicide. 22 veterans. It's time we take this seriously, as seriously as any other ailment that veterans face, and we bring awareness to the fact that we all have to do our part in helping alleviate the situation. I thank the author for authoring this resolution and proud co-author of it. I'm Ms. Mr. Mathis? Okay. Members, seeing no additional discussion or debate on this item, Ms. Melendez has requested co-authors on the first roll. The clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors. This is co-authors, members, on the resolution. This is for co-authors. There are, clerk will close the roll, there are 70 co-authors added without objection. We may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. File item 45 is ACR 190. Clerk will read. Assembly concurrent resolution 190 by Assemblyman Waldron and others relative to HIV testing day. Ms. Waldron, you may open on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, today I'm here to present ACR 190. Along with my colleague, Assemblymember Mike Gibson, we are joint authors, which proclaims June 27, 2016 as HIV Testing Day in California 
In the United States, an estimated 850,000 individuals are living with HIV. Only one-fourth of them are aware of their status. As of June 30, 2014, California reached an appalling number of 50,955 cases. Unfortunately, we see over 4,700 new cases diagnosed in California each year, the second highest among the 50 states in the nation of new HIV cases. Despite HIV's seriousness, individuals with this disease may not know their HIV status. In fact, one in seven people with HIV do not know they're infected. Experts recommend voluntary testing for all individuals, even for those not at high risk, in order to prevent the spread of this disease. During this day, June 27, 2016, coming up next week, individuals can improve their health outcomes and lives while preventing new cases of HIV and AIDS by getting tested. I ask for the first role to be open for co-authors. Thank you, Ms. Walder. Mr. Gibson. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of ACR 190 and commend the author for bringing this resolution um, forward. As the chair of the Select Committee of on Infectious Diseases and High-Risk Disadvantaged Communities, I have held several hearings on this topic and keenly aware of the importance of this resolution. Since the beginning of the AIDS epidemic, nearly two million Americans have been infected by HIV. Almost one in ten of those infected live in California, with Los Angeles County having the highest incidence of HIV and AIDS in the state of California. In terms of racial demographics, African Americans are almost a, are a most among affected by HIV in the United States, according to the disproportionate amount of the new existing diagnosis. HIV testing day will help spread awareness of this important disease. And I respectfully um, ask when I vote and thank the author for bringing this good resolution before us today. Again, I respectfully ask for your I vote on ACR 190. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. All debate having ceased on the item. Ms. Waldron, would you like co-authors on the first roll? Clerk will open the roll. Members, this is for co-authors. It's for co-authors on the resolution. This is co-authors. Clerk will close the roll. There are 71 co-authors added. Without objection, we may take a voice vote on the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted.